the appendicular bones include the two upper extremities and two lower extremities okay so the upper extremities and lower extremities these belong to the appendicular skeleton okay so first we'll see the upper extremity bones this part of the upper extremity that connects the upper limb to the axial skeleton this part is called the pectoral girdle so there are two pectoral girdles and the pectoral girdle is formed by two bones the clavicle or collarbone in the front and scapula or shoulder blade bone in the back so that is the pectoral girdle okay and then the upper limb bones include the humerus which is the bone of your arm and then radius and ulnar the bones of the forearm and the bones of your hand so let's first talk about the pectoral girdle bones that means the clavicle and scapula okay clavicle is a long bone placed horizontally this way most of the long bones are vertically placed like this but clavicle is horizontally and it has two ends one end is called the acromial end which is the lateral end attached to the acromion of the scapula this part of the scapula is called the acromion that's why this end is called the acromial end and the medial end is attached to the sternum so that is the sternal end so acromial end and sternal end okay clavicle fracture occurs in the clavicle very often you see that clavicle is slightly anteriorly or forward then the ribs here these are the ribs and this is the clavicle which is slightly anterior to the ribs so when someone falls to the ground this way or if something hits from the front that would hit the clavicle first so the fracture of the clavicle is pretty common okay so that is the clavicle and this is the shoulder blade or a scapula in the back okay so i'll show you the scapula first so this is a scapula you have two scapula or shoulder blade now <clears throat> this is right sides scapula to determine which sides bone is this you have to remember a couple of things first you have to make sure which part is superior and which part is inferior okay and then you need to make sure which part is lateral which part is medial and then which part is in the front which part is in the back so three things superior inferior lateral medial anterior posterior okay if you just remember a couple of points that will help you to determine the side this is right side scapula okay why because this part is the superior part so we have to set it this way hold it this way we cannot hold it this way because this is the bottom or inferior so now superior inferior is decided okay so this is superior now we will decide lateral medial in this bone this part is called the glenoid cavity and it is laterally why because the head of your arm bone humerus fits here okay, in the glenoid cavity so this is the head of the humerus so forms the shoulder joint here okay so this must be laterally because your arm bone comes from the side okay so this is lateral so lateral medial is done then the last thing 
we have to decide anterior posterior in this one anterior surface is flat no structure here is here in the back you have a big structure that is the spine of this scapula so this must be in the back this must be lateral and this must be superior so let's make sure again this is the superior part so we'll hold like this this is lateral so we'll hold like this and this is the back so if I hold like this what is wrong this should go to the back so this is not to the back now so I have to hold like this if I hold like this you see this is in the back but this is not laterally this is medially this should go that way but if you hold like this then this one goes to the front right so it does not work if you hold in the left side in the right side if you hold like this all three points fit superior the back spine and laterally the glenoid cavity for the head of the humerus so this is the right scapula okay right sides scapula now we'll see the parts of this bone this bone has three angles this is the superior angle this is the inferior angle and this is the lateral angle okay so it is a kind of triangular bone now we'll see the anterior and posterior the, as i mentioned the anterior surface is flat and slightly concave okay curved like this <clears throat> and this is called subscapular fossa whole anterior surface is like slightly you know curved here and that is the subscapular fossa now let's see the back as i told you in the back this is the spine that sticks out from the posterior surface so this is the spine and this part above the spine is called supraspinous fossa supra means above the spine supraspinous below the spine is infraspinous fossa so in the front you have only one fossa whole area is subscapular fossa in the back above the spine supraspinous and below the spine infraspinous fossa so those are three fossa okay and then let's see the spine so this is the spine of the sca scapula in the back and then it turns like this and forms this structure this is called the acromion so this is the acromion this is the spine okay so spine becomes acromion okay there is another structure here that is called the coracoid process the term coracoid came from the beak of a bird so it probably looks like a beak of a bird uh, and that's why this part has been named as coracoid process okay and <clears throat> I have already mentioned this is the glenoid cavity where the head of the humerus fits and forms the shoulder joint however you see the head of the humerus is pretty big round spherical and this glenoid cavity is very shallow not deep so it holds the head not very strongly okay so the displacement of the head occurs very easily okay and that's why we often hear the shoulder dislocation because of the shallowness of the glenoid cavity it cannot hold the head of the humerus very strongly so the head can come off in sports uh, in football or soccer you will often hear this term shoulder dislocation okay in the upper border of the scapula there is a notch you see the u-shaped area that is called supra scapular notch supra means above the scapula notch is the u-shaped area in the bone so this is the supra scapular notch okay so 
this is the scapula and its parts then we'll talk about the bones of the upper limb in your upper limb the arm bone is the humerus only one bone and this is the largest bone of the upper extremity and in the forearm you have two bones okay the radius is the lateral one and ulna is the medial one and then you have the bones of your hand so let's see the humerus first then radius ulna and the bones of the hand okay so this is a humerus which side's humerus is this again you have to decide three things superior inferior lateral medial and anterior posterior okay so now let's hold this bone to fit those three points so this head should go medially because you already know this should get attached to the scapula right glenoid cavity of the scapula so the humerus comes from the side so this should be medially so we already have decided medial lateral so only one point uh, you need to remember this should go towards you okay this is wrong this is outwards that's wrong it should be inwards okay that is number one this is the upper end it is easy because the head is usually in the upper end so superior inferior is done too so this is the upper this is the lower this is medial the head and now we have to decide the front and back in the back of the lower part of this bone there is a lower fossa here you see this is called the olecranon fossa okay so this lower single fossa is in the back so if i hold like this this is wrong because this should go to the back also this should go towards you medially okay so this is the right sides humerus why three points are working here this is superior this is medial and the olecranon fossa the single fossa in the back is in the back okay so this is right sides humerus okay now we'll see the parts of the humerus humerus has an upper end a lower end and a shaft okay so this is the upper end of the humerus in the upper end you have a nice head very smooth and round head that forms the shoulder joint then around the head this narrow area is called the anatomical neck and then you have two tubercles at the upper end this one the elevated structure is called the greater tubercle and this one is called the lesser tubercle okay and in between the greater and lesser tubercles there is a groove that is called intertubercular groove or sulcus intertubercular sulcus okay the long head of tendon of long head of biceps muscle pass through it that's why you have a groove here for the tendon of biceps brachii so and the last thing is the area here upper end is attached to the shaft this area is called the surgical neck most of the cases fracture in this bone occurs here that's why this area is called the surgical neck so let's quickly go over again this nice round part is the head forms the shoulder joint around the head this narrow area is called the anatomical neck then two tubercles the greater and lesser tubercles in between you have intertubercular groove or sulcus and this is the surgical neck of the humerus so there are two necks right anatomical neck and surgical neck okay 
so that is the upper end of the humerus this is the lower end of the humerus in the, at the lower end you have few structures this is the front and this is the back in the front you see this kind of round structure laterally that is called the capitulum okay so this is the capitulum and this kind of rectangular structure beside it this is called the trochlea so capitulum is round and trochlea is rectangular and these two structures articulate with the radius and ulna two forearm bones this one is for the radius this one is for the ulna okay and here you have the elbow joint so let me show you how the radius you see this is the radius the head of the radius is nice round flat so this part nicely fits here okay like this so this is for the radius and this rectangular trochlea is for the ulna this is the ulna so you see this notch very nicely fits in the ulna uh, trochlea that's why this is called the trochlea notch okay anyway so these structures are for those two bones and <clears throat> above the capitulum there is a small fossa or depression this is called the radial fossa because the radius is attached here and part of radius when you flex your forearm goes into it and above the trochlea you have a fossa that is called the coronoid fossa okay so radial fossa coronoid fossa and in the back i mentioned before there is a large fossa that is the olecranon fossa so this part of the ulna is called the olecranon process and it goes into it when you extend your forearm it goes into it so olecranon this is olecranon fossa for olecranon process okay so that is the lower end of the humerus and in the middle of the shaft there is a rough area for the deltoid muscle attachment of the deltoid muscle that's why that area is called the deltoid tuberosity in the shaft okay so that is the humerus now we'll see the radius and ulna two forearm bones okay this is a radius the lateral bone of your forearm okay and this is the ulna the medial bone of the forearm okay and <clears throat> they are attached to each other the upper ends of radius and ulna are attached to each other as well as the lower ends are attached to each other so this attachment is called the proximal radio ulnar joint and this is called the distal radio ulnar joint here okay so proximal the upper joint distal is the lower joint first uh, quickly i'll show you the radius so this is the radius the head of the radius is flat round not a spherical okay so it's like a disc and below the head you have the neck of the radius okay so this is the neck of the radius you know in your body your head is you know in the top and then below the head you have what the neck and then you have a tuberosity round elevated structure that is called the radial tuberosity a tuberosity in the radius so those are three main structures at the upper end head neck radial tuberosity <clears throat> the lower end has an extended part you see this part is going a little bit further downwards beyond the lower end so that extended 
downwards part is called the styloid process so this is the styloid process of the radius okay and this is the anterior surface of the lower end and there is a clinical importance here your radial artery is located here and you see this is a nice flat surface so you can press your radial artery against this flat hard surface to get the pulse of a person so you can read or get the heart rate or pulse by pressing the radial artery which runs here against the flat surface here okay so this is the radius which is the lateral bone of the forearm this is the ulna the medial bone of the forearm upper end of ulna has a structure that is the uppermost structure that is called the olecranon process and this structure is called the <coughs> coracoid process a uh, coronoid process okay so this is the polycranon process and this is the coronoid process of the ulna and in between there is a notch u-shaped area so that is called the trochlear notch okay you remember i told you that this is the trochlea of the humerus so it goes into it like this okay so trochlear notch so the upper end is like a uh, an open mouth like this so this is the olecranon process and this is the coronoid process so this is the olecranon process this is the coronoid process trochlear notch okay and at the lower end you have an extended part that is going further down and that is the styloid process of ulna so you have a styloid process in both radius and ulna right the part that goes further downwards so this is the styloid process of the radius this is the styloid process of the ulna so that are the two forearm bones now we'll see the hand the bones of your hand in your hand you have eight small bones in the wrist and these are called the carpals or carpal bones how many eight okay those are short bones so eight carpals here in the wrist area then you have five metacarpals and we count uh, start counting from the thumb side so this is the thumb right and this is number one metacarpal this is number two number three number four number five okay so in the thumb side is number one metacarpal so five metacarpals here those are the bones in your palm here okay and then you have the finger bones called the phalanges in your thumb you have two finger bones or phalanges the distal and proximal okay only two but in other four fingers you have three in each finger distal is the farthest one then middle and the proximal so three in each so 12 here in these four fingers and in this one you have two so 12 plus 2 14 so to total 14 phalanges okay <clears throat> so those are the bones of your hand Now we'll see the bones of your lower extremity. Your lower extremity has a pelvic girdle formed by two hip bones. These are the hip bones 
they joined together here anteriorly at pubic symphysis and this whole thing is called the pelvic girdle okay in your upper extremity you remember you had two pectoral girdles right this is one this is another in case of lower extremity you have only one pelvic girdle formed by two hip bones okay and the lower extremity bones include the femur which is the longest and the strongest bone of the body this is the only bone of your thigh and then you have the leg bones the bigger one is the tibia and the smaller one is the fibula okay tibia is medial bone and fibula is lateral bone in the front of the knee you have the kneecap which is called patella okay here so the femur the bone of the thigh then kneecap is the patella and the leg bones are tibia and fibula okay and the bones of your foot so we'll see those bones okay <coughs> so this is a pelvic bone or hip bone two hip bones together from the pelvic girdle okay so first we'll see which side's hip bone is this again three points superior inferior this is the superior or upper part of the hip bone this is the lower part so we will definitely hold like this we will not hold like this make sense so this is superior now we have to decide lateral and medial okay this fossa is called the acetabulum for the head of the femur okay so this is the head of the femur very nice round spherical goes into the acetabulum from the side right so this should be laterally the acetabulum should be laterally so i'll hold like this and this is top so this is lateral those two things are done now anterior posterior in the back you have a nice large notch this is called greater sciatic notch it, it should be in the back so let's fit those three things this is the top this should be laterally and this should be in the back so if i hold like this this is the left pelvic bone or hip bone okay which is also called coxal bone so this is left sides pelvic bone and one thing you can do when you will just grab this bone just grab in a way or hold in a way that your this part of your hand nicely fits into the greater side notch goes like this that is the strongest way you can hold this bone okay and the fingers will cover the acetabulum so if you can hold like this that will tell you this is left sides pelvic bone okay now we'll see the parts of the pelvic bone this whole upper part is called the ilium so this whole upper portion is the ilium and lower part is divided into two this is the front this is called the pubis and this is the back this is called the ischium so ilium ischium pubis so those are the three parts of this bone okay now let's talk about the ilium the top border of the ilium is called the iliac crest you know when we say the top of the mountain we say the crest of the mountain right similarly this is the crest of the ilium or iliac crest okay and <clears throat> this part this is the front okay is called anterior superior iliac spine very easy this is front that means anterior this is back posterior right and this is the upper one that's why superior so anterior superior what iliac spine because spine is the projected part it is a part of the spine it's anterior superior and this is anterior inferior iliac spine in the back you have 
posterior superior, posterior inferior, iliac spine. Okay. So again, this is the iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine. Okay. Then uh, this inner surface of the ilium has a fossa like depression like this right so that is called the iliac fossa fossa of the ilium iliac fossa so those are the parts of the ilium okay now we'll see the pubis the lower anterior part okay the pubis of the uh, hip bone articulates with the pubis of the other hip bone here at the pubic symphysis okay and <coughs> this is the ischium and you see this is a rough irregular structure okay it is a bony mass and it is rough this is called the ischial tuberosity and ischial tuberosity uh, is the structure where we sit on the chair or on the ground when we sit we sit on this okay uh, so this is the ischial tuberosity it covers a big part of the ischium and you see here between the ischium and pubis there is a large foramen this is called the obturator foramen okay so obturator nerve and obturator blood vessels from the pelvic area of your body enter into the thigh so from the pelvic cavity um, uh, how the blood vessels and nerve will enter into the thigh through the obturator foramen okay and <coughs> this is a large socket for the head of the femur and this socket is called the acetabulum this is a deep socket and the head can be very strongly held in it okay so this joint is one of the strongest joint in your body the head will not easily come off it is not like shoulder joint so this is the strongest joint in your body sometimes if you force to take the head off what will happen you will get a fracture in the neck but it still head will not come off okay so that is the acetabulum for the head of the femur okay and couple more things this is a greater sciatic notch and this is a lesser sciatic notch okay and they are separated by this spine that is called the ischial spine so ischial tuberosity is this rough part and ischial spine is this you know uh, process and in between the uh, the, uh, the above the ischial spine this is the greater sciatic notch and this is below the ischial spine lesser sciatic notch you must uh, have heard the name sciatic nerve the largest nerve in the body passes through this this is the sciatic notch okay so those are the uh, parts of the hip bone okay and this rough part of the ilium uh, gets attached to the sacrum you remember the sacrum this is the sacrum and this part of the sacrum articulates with this rough part okay forms the uh, these two bones together form the sacroiliac joint okay like this so let's quickly go over this bone has three parts whole upper part is the ilium the top 
border is the iliac crest this is the iliac fossa in the inner side and anterior superior iliac spine anterior inferior iliac spine posterior superior iliac spine posterior inferior iliac spine okay and then the lower part has two structures the pubis in the front and ischium in the back ischium has two important structures this rough large structure is the ischial tuberosity and this is the ischial spine okay and this is the greater sciatic notch lesser sciatic notch this large foramen is the obturator foramen and this is the acetabulum for the hip joint okay then this is the femur so femur is the largest longest and strongest bone it is the only bone of your thigh like other long bones it has upper end lower end and a shaft first let's see the upper end so the upper end has a nice spherical head for the hip joint okay and next to the head you have a pretty long neck so this is the neck of the femur okay and next to the neck you have two large structures irregular bony mass this is the greater trochanter this big one and this is the lesser trochanter the smaller one okay <coughs> and in between the trochanters you have intertrochanteric crest okay in the back and in between two trochanters in the front you have a line called the intertrochanteric line so let me quickly go over again this is the head of the femur this is the neck of the femur this is greater trochanter this is lesser trochanter and intertrochanteric crest in the back intertrochanteric line in the front okay in the shaft this sharp line is called the linea aspera and the lower end of the linea aspera divides into two lines like this and these are called the supracondylar lines why called supracondylar because these are called condyles these are condyles so above the condyle these two lines are supracondylar lines okay and they join to form the linea aspera and in the middle of the shaft there is a tiny foramen for the nutrient blood vessels that's why this is called nutrient foramen if you look carefully uh, there is a foramen here in the middle of the shaft so that is the shaft and now we'll see the lower end the lower end has two large condyles okay so lateral and medial condyles this is medial because this head goes medially so this is medial condyle and this is lateral condyle and on the condyle you have small round structure that is called epicondyle it's like you know this whole thing is the condyle and on the condyle a small structure is sitting that's the epicondyle uh, it's like you know uh, sometimes you put your child on your shoulder so this is whole thing big is you condyle and your child is sitting on it your shoulder that is the epicondyle okay <clears throat> and you see in the back this is the back of the femur in between these two condyles this is a fossa called the intercondylar fossa so all these names make sense right so inter means in between the condyles the fossa is like depression so intercondylar fossa supracondylar lines supra means above okay now we'll see the front of the lower end in the front you have a nice smooth surface for the kneecap patella okay so this is for the attachment of the patella you know in the front of the knee you have the kneecap so this is the anterior and this is posterior now which sides femur is this again three points okay 
this head should be medially because it is coming from outside okay so this should be medially this is the upper end we all know so upper end and this should be medially and one more thing anterior posterior as i mentioned that this intercondylar fossa should be in the back right so now if i hold like this this is wrong because this should go to the back so if i hold like this this is correct makes sense this is towards you this is the upper end and you see the intercondylar fossa is in the back okay so this is right sides femur okay so that is the femur the bone of your thigh now we'll see the bones of your leg in your leg you have tibia and fibula now you must remember I mentioned that tibia is the medial bone of the leg and fibula is the lateral bone of your leg and tibia is bigger and is stronger than the fibula so the body weight is actually transmitted to the foot through the tibia not through the fibula fibula actually supports the leg muscles so the weight is transmitted from the femur to the foot through the tibia that's why this is strong the upper end of tibia has two condyles to articulate with the two condyles of the femur you remember the lower end of the femur has two condyles and the upper end of tibia also has two condyles so they will articulate each other join each other to form the knee joint okay so two condyles of the lower end of femur articulate with two condyles of the upper end of the tibia okay <coughs> and in the front of the upper end this elevated structure where the patellar ligament comes from above and gets attached patellar ligament is used for knee jerk testing you know uh, we hit with a small hammer sometimes when you go to the doctor they will hit and see if your leg kicks forward okay so the patellar ligament comes from patella and gets attached to this tuberosity this structure called the tbl tuberosity remember very important for the attachment of the patellar ligament okay so that is the upper end of the tibia two condyles and tbl tuberosity and <coughs> the lower end of tibia has this extended bony structure going further downwards in case of leg bones it is not called staloid process it is called a malleolus you remember in case of radius and ulnar we had similar structures called the staloid process in case of leg bones it is called the malleolus so this is the medial malleolus because this part goes to the medial side okay so medial malleolus and <coughs> this lower end articulates with a bone of your foot this is called the trochlea uh, uh, this is called the talus so this bone of your foot is called the talus and this smooth surface is the trochlear surface and that articulates with the uh, lower end of the tibia like this you see this is the lower end of the tibia this is the talus upper surface of the talus so forms the ankle joint okay so that's the tibia and the smaller bone of the leg is the fibula and this is the upper end of the fibula or head of the fibula and this is the lower end of the fibula again you see this bone also has an extended part that is the malleolus 
and this malleolus is called the lateral malleolus because this is the lateral bone of the leg. So this is the medial malleolus in the tibia and this is the lateral malleolus in the fibula. This is the stronger and this is the smaller and weaker one. This one transmits the body weight. This one supports the leg muscles. The last thing is the foot. So this is an articulated foot. All foot bones are here. First, this bone is called the heel bone. And the body weight is mainly given to the ground through this heel. Okay? And this heel bone is the largest bone of the foot and this is called the calcaneus. So this is the calcaneus. In the back of the calcaneus you have a rough surface or area where the largest and the strongest tendon gets attached and that is called the tendocalcaneus, calcaneal tendon, also called Achilles tendon or tendoachilles. Okay. So this is the calcaneus and this is for the Achilles tendon or tendocalcaneus. And this is the heel bone. And then above that, this is the talus I already mentioned, articulates with the lower end of the tibia to form the ankle joint. Okay, so calcaneus talus. And then you have few other tarsal bones. Okay, so there are total seven tarsal bones. So if I divide this whole articulated foot into two halves this is the back this is the front the back half is formed by the tarsal bones how many seven okay so one calcaneus one talus and other carpal bones are here okay five so five six seven and forms the back part or posterior part of the foot then you have metatarsals how many five and again uh, we count the metatarsals as we count the metacarpals the big toe sides one is the first metatarsal it is much thicker than others okay second third fourth fifth metatarsals and then phalanges phalanges are same in number uh, in your big toe you have two phalanges distal and proximal in other four toes you have three in each okay distal middle and proximal okay so total 14 so in case of foot these bones are tarsals in case of your hand these bones are the carpals so difference is t and c the first letter these are metacarpals, these are metatarsals, okay, and phalanges are same. So those are the bones of your foot. So in your foot, you have one less than the hand, because in hand, you have eight carpals. In your foot, you have seven tarsals, so one less, others are same in number okay so those are the bones of your upper and lower extremities